Hello everybody, Blockchain for Humanity here again. Today we doing kind of following to our last interview, which was uh, with the Bitcoin Beach, the first Bitcoin uh, circular economy in the world. And uh, they start a movement, which many of the community trying to rep replicate around the world. So we invited Glenn, it's a founder of Bitcoin Ubuntu from South Africa to ask him everything about the project. So Glenn, Pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Ivan. The pleasure is mine. Thank you for having me. So let's let's start with the with the first uh, question. Uh, first of all, I need to know where where you are based and what's the idea behind the uh, Bitcoin Ubuntu. Okay, uh, Bitcoin Ubuntu is based in um, Swellendam in the Western Cape of South Africa. Um, and the idea of Bitcoin Ubuntu is to provide an education and outreach platform to try to help to better inform people as to the um, potential benefits of understanding Bitcoin for themselves. So our, our mission is to, to provide uh, free educational resources, onboarding resources, um, and to use our project to try and help to destigmatize Bitcoin in our community. Yeah, because there's very, very, very negative stigma surrounding Bitcoin because of the number of scams and things that it's become conflated with. Cool. That's very nice. And what, what is your story? What, uh, what was your life before you start this project? I spent most of my professional career in the design and publishing industry, um, specializing in in the design and layout of research and academic publications mainly. And uh, when when you start with the project, because uh, I think it's a very recent one, right? Yes, the 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 idea of the project really only started at the beginning of the year. And so um, it's it's still very, very early. We're still in the process of building a team and, um, you know, finding our roots. So uh, can I ask you about your motivation? Why you start with this? Well, I, I, I had been looking for some time already for something to do in the Bitcoin space. And after trying my hand at a few different projects, I finally settled on pursuing a project that was based on the example of Bitcoin Beach and Bitcoin Ikasi in the education space. Um, I felt that that was where I could make the most impact in my community was by, um, you know, following their lead and doing okay. something similar for our community here. Okay, so what, what are the challenges in your community? What the people struggling with? Um, uh, amongst the community which we aim to work, the the problems are predominantly those which come along with poverty, so illiteracy, unemployment, poverty, substance abuse, um, domestic violence, uh, petty and violent crime. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know it's, all it's, of the things that you would find in in most poor um, communities. Your approach is uh, educating the people right about the bitcoin so uh, how are you approaching the people well it, it depends on the individual but with the people that that we speak to or with most people really the simplest method that i've found is to just point out the the dramatic increase in the cost of living over time um and then use that as a way to illustrate how returning to sound money um could help to address that. So you're doing the meetups, or you just uh, go in to visit the local shop, for example. How how you how you gathering them to to talk about the Bitcoin? Right. Well, in order to to help bootstrap our project, we followed the um, the guidelines set out in the bubble documents by Bitcoin Beach, and so we spent the first few months just looking for a suitable um, existing project to partner up with uh, a, a social upliftment project so we did eventually identify a suitable one in a in a soccer youth 
outreach program that works in the community with which we um, hope to work. So in partnering with them, we now do uh, monthly, some, I mean, weekly and sometimes bi-weekly meetings with them um, in order to start to establish um, a footprint there. So, and do you see the interest of the people about the Bitcoin? Uh, what kind of people are going there? Okay. Yeah. No. When we organize the meetup, we don't. We haven't been broadcasting them very widely. We've been. It's mainly been limited um, to the people that we are working with, with the organization okay. that runs the the soccer club. It is open to um, to all comers, but we haven't broadcast far and wide that we're holding them. So we do on occasion have uh, guests popping in to visit and to see what we're up to. But at the moment, it's it's mainly the core team that we're working with at the soccer club and then ourselves um, with okay. a few people coming in here and there. And what about the kids? Are you targeting the kids or mostly the, the adults? At the moment, we're working still very closely with the adults with the intention to set up a formal um syllabus and program for the children at the soccer field but at this stage we're still in the works with um, helping to educate and onboard the adults um, helping them to get grips to grips with the technology and the economics and um, you know get to understand it themselves first um, so that when we do open up a, a classroom for the children that can be run by the community themselves Oh, so it's a, a kind of a uh, plan for the project to build some kind of school, Bitcoin school or Bitcoin classes. Yes, yes. The idea is definitely to have a physical um, presence. There is a building that we have in mind where we just don't, we don't know yet whether or not we'll, we'll get access to it. Um, failing that, we'll have to, you know, we'll ha have to have a look at other um solutions mm -hmm. and the the other community are you with in in touch with the the other like a bitcoin beach or bitcoin Ekasi? did they help you are you collaborating they they did help us they've been enormously supportive bitcoin beach and bitcoin Ekasi were the first um ready to support us um, they do check on, in with us on a on a regular basis to see how we're doing and if we do need help. Um, but mostly, you know, we we are independent of each other. We have our own projects, and we we you know um, we we keep in contact, but we are independent. And what the, what kind of material are you using to to teach? So do, do you have uh, your own study material or are you using uh, like something that is already existing and implemented in the other community? Yeah, we, we've started to implement um, My First Bitcoin, which is an open source translation of the um, uh, Mi Premier Bitcoin um, mm -hmm. from, I believe, El Salvador. Um, so we, we've started to work our way through that material um, just now we're on our second week of that and then uh, the hope is to implement that as a regular course that would be offered for free to anybody in the in the community that would be interested in in completing it what what is your vision if, if, you, if you if you could visualize a little bit of future how you think uh, bitcoin can help and really help in your community um, I think it can help by providing opportunities for people to be at the forefront of um, developments in this new and emerging market, no matter really what kind of skills they, they have, whether they're creative or technical. Or um, I, I think there's masses of amounts of opportunity in the Bitcoin space with all of the um, developments that are happening and companies that are being built around this protocol. Um, over and above that, I think it can help in banking the unbanked. It can bring them onto the online and digital economies. So they're able to offer their goods and services to the global markets. What about what about the local shops? Do you 
visiting them, trying to convince them to accept the Bitcoin. So what we're focused on now is, is educating the coaches, the team that we've partnered, uh, partnered up with. Um, so now the that um, nonprofit organization that we've partnered with, their volunteers are now being paid salaries in Bitcoin. And as they are learning how to use it and what it is and why it's important, um, we we need we want to get them to the point where they are able to approach the shops in their neighborhood themselves yeah. and do the onboarding themselves. So we don't want to force, uh, you know, force this thing before people are ready. We want to do this slowly and methodically, make sure that the education is in place. I think that's the most important piece is is that people understand what it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, especially once they they really to start to understand the 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 benefits and the long term benefits of accepting Bitcoin, um, and and are able to more eloquently um, express those benefits to their to members of their community. And what is the hardest part uh, to make people understand about the Bitcoin? Probably the scarcity, the 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 fact that it that that there are really only 21 million. Um, it's difficult, I think, for people to to wrap their head around the concept of something that is truly, truly digitally scarce in a way that is um, completely decentralized. And, and um, I, um, I think it's also, it's difficult to get people to understand that it's not simply an investment asset, but rather that it presents as with a unique opportunity to return to a sound money standard um, outside of the control of every uh, of any central third party or authority. How do you see the um, CBDC coming? Is that uh, also in, in South Africa, like they trying to implement that? Yes, I do believe that there, there is a CBDC project in the works. Um, I don't know any of the details but as for to the best of my knowledge um most countries are are working on or in or exploring cbdc's at this point and uh, when, what do you think included. what do you think about that <laughs> the the ideas of cbdc's quite frankly horrifies me especially when coupled with something like a social credit score system and digital identities i think the implications are absolutely horrific and it's it's what draws me to Bitcoin, first and foremost. And do you think people will accept that? I am afraid that some people may not be left with much option. So you so you are completely sure that they will be implemented. I'm I'm fairly certain they'll be implemented. Yes, I'm fairly certain they will be implemented. Um, I. Imagine that they will be introduced via a universal basic income and they will be first extended probably to the most desperate and most in need of um, assistance. Okay, so in in your short uh, experience with building Bitcoin community, what uh, would be your advice for the other which want to start a similar project um, I, I think for anybody who's looking to start their own Bitcoin circular economy, one of the best places to start is reading the Bitcoin Beach Bubble documents. There's, it's not a long document, it's a quick read, but it's got some really useful um, pointers that, have, that, that they've learned from experience. Um, so learn from other people's experience by reading things like the bubble documents, reach out to other circular Bitcoin economy projects, um, they'll only be too happy to speak to you and help you along. Um, and persistence, you know, persistence is key. Don't, um, you, you, you're you not going to, you're not going to orange pull the whole world in one day. It's, uh, it's, it's going to take time. Um, you know, you're going to have the most luck in trying to start a circular economy by taking Bitcoin to where it's needed the most. Um, people with credit cards and tap to pay cell phones don't 
quite appreciate the utility that Bitcoin has to offer in the same way that somebody who doesn't have a bank account. And what percentage is uh, of the people that uh, are unbanked? Um, I, I couldn't say. I couldn't say at all exactly what percentage in the community we're working with are banked or, or, or not. Um, but even those that are banked, I think Bitcoin offers a much better solution to what the banking system does, um, just in terms of convenience and and value. What What's the goal? What's the plan for the future for Bitcoin Ubuntu? Um, so the the plan is to is to continue building out our team, try and get a core team of you know core team of reliable, dedicated um, volunteers, and uh, and expand the project so that our education and outreach um, moves beyond just the soccer club itself into the broader local community. And uh, what is your uh, social network? Are you active on, on social network? Where can people find you to follow you or support you? Yes, uh, we're very active on Twitter. We, in fact, host a, a daily um, Twitter space every morning from 8 until 10 South African Standard Time. Um, that's Monday to Friday. And uh, you'll often find us hosting spaces outside of those hours as well. Um, so we're very uh, active on Twitter. You can often find us there if you've got any questions or want to reach out to us. That's 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 the place. Last question for me: uh, What the Bitcoin means to you personally? Bitcoin is uh, first and foremost hope for me, but it's also opportunity. It's insurance um, against an encroaching surveillance state, state CBDCs. I think it offers our best hope at maintaining um, human freedom and dignity, and um, it, it excites me to it excites me to think about how humanity might flourish under a Bitcoin standard. Wow, oh, that, that's very nice. So, um, thank you very much, uh, Glenn, for for this uh, for this interview. I wish you the best for for your project. It's very important what you guys are doing there, and uh, we need more people like you. And thank you, thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>